In the United States, one in six couples are diagnosed with infertility. My guest is Brendan Peterson, a psychology professor here at Chapman University. He has conducted extensive research on this topic, and he says that most people think infertility is a woman's problem, but it really is a couple's problem. Welcome, Brennan. Thanks for having me. This is a, you know, a great topic. It's a hot topic, and one in six couples, what is it worldwide? How many people do you think worldwide have infertility? Some of the worldwide estimates are about 80 to 160 million people. Wow. And in the United States, it's about uh, anywhere between four and seven million. So it's, it's quite prevalent. Is it becoming more common or is it just more diagnosed or what, what do you think? Some of the rates actually have gone up in some developed mm -hmm. countries like the mm -hmm. United States, delayed childbearing does make a difference. I mean, underdeveloped countries, things like malnutrition can also make a difference. So we have seen rates that have increased. What about in this country, an industrialized country? What causes infertility? What's the biggest, is there a big cause like STDs or sexual STDs play a disease? role. They play a role, particularly for women's female reproductive organs if they receive damage from a prior STD. Uh, the most common for women is an ovulation disorder, mm -hmm. irregular ovulation. Uh, it could also be if the embryo has difficulty implanting in her uterus. Mm -hmm. um, for men, it would be low sperm count, low sperm motility, um, testicular cancer. Those are, those are the main things that, that attribute to it. And for women also, there's age-related fertility decline as well. So we always traditionally think, not blame the women, but think it's a woman's issue, but really you're saying it's, it's not, right? It, that's exactly right. The, the prevalence rates are actually one-third of, of, of cases could be diagnosed by a female factor, mm -hmm. the things that I just mentioned. One-third could be diagnosed by a male factor, and then another third is what they call a combination factor. And interestingly enough, 20% of those, it can be even unexplained. They, everything looks good, but something's just not working. So it is, it's kind of equal across the board for men and women. You mentioned the problems for women. What are the big causes for men? Is it sports related or what, what is it? I think uh, it can just be you know, low sperm count, low sperm motility just resulting from development. Um, but it, it can also re result from impotence. It can result from some, kind of, uh, some type of cancer where they've had treatments. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has, they've been trying to have a, a baby for six months or a yeah. year, when should they start seeking treatment, professional treatment? Yeah, I think the, the best thing to do is if after about that year-long period, because mm -hmm. the, the official diagnosis is they've been trying for one year okay. of un unprotected intercourse, and it's not happening. Mm -hmm. uh, in women over 35, uh, physicians have now recommended that's, un that's six months. So they should be contacting their, their physician. And the, the first line to really go is at the OBGYN level okay. and to tell their doctor, we're having difficulty. And the OBGYN can then help them by doing a fertility workup. The, the man gets his, uh, does a semen analysis. They, they examine the sperm count. Mm -hmm. They see if it's male factor. The woman will have, look at her ovulation cycles. They'll look at if the fallopian tubes are not blocked. And once they've done that, uh, then they can pres either prescribe medications or they can do surgery. Mm -hmm. And 85% of infertility can actually be treated at that level. Mm -hmm. So we oftentimes think that it's the big treatments that, that happen for infertility, and it's oftentimes not. Uh, when you get into assisted reproductive technologies, such as in vitro fertilization, mm -hmm. that actually accounts for about less than 3% of all infertility services. Oh, so is that right? Mm -hmm. oh. So you go to the um, OBGYN, and then you try another year, and then you, would, then you go on to it, more advanced techniques? Yeah, if they, if they do the surgery, let's say that they do a laparoscopy for a mm -hmm. blocked fallopian tube, mm -hmm. um, or they, they treat ovulation through medication. Mm -hmm. um, the, the man also, actually, not just for surgery for, for the sperm count, but they can do uh, IUI, intrauterine insemin insemination, mm -hmm. where there's a, a, a sperm sample, which is then kind of highly concentrated and then injected directly into the one's uterus. That can actually take place before they get to, say, say IUI. So What's all IUI again? Intrauterine insemination. Okay. So that's kind of this highly concentrated, you know, a semen sample that's yeah. injected into the woman's uterus. Now I imagine this is tremendously stressful for people and probably causes some marital discord at times. When, and that's where you come in, I imagine, right? Right. right. So tell me your role in all this as a counselor and a psychologist. Yeah, my, my training is in marriage and family therapy, and um, also I teach in the psychology department. So mm -hmm. I look at kind of the mental health aspects of this. So couples, let's say that they've been going through this for a year. They've gone to the, to the doctor, nothing has worked. Then they've gotten a referral for a reproductive endocrinologist and they start going into the assisted reproductive technologies. Say so they go into starting to do IVF. Mm -hmm. And then the, st the stress really kind of amps up at that time. They've gone through it for a, a long time and so counseling can really provide them a place to make sense of what's happening. 
um, there are a variety of, of psychological stressors that couples really go through. And interestingly enough, couples actually can strengthen their marital relationships during these first few mm -hmm. years because they, they view it as a problem that we can cope with together. We can get through this um, if they have similar goals. So that can, yeah. that can actually strengthen the marital relationship. Um, but what we've also found is that over time, the marital relationship can, can weaken. Does stress actually ever cause infertility? It's been a big debate, um, and it still goes on. I, I read a lot of journal articles mm -hmm. about that stress is, can be accounted for, and it's part of the variance in, in explaining mm -hmm. a treatment outcome. And then some that say no, it's, it's clearly not an outcome. So it's, it's kind of in the, in the medical community, it's still ongoing. Because I guess if it was, they should see you early on. I mean, if really, if right. To me, it sounds like they should see counseling maybe sometime after the uh, earlier than later. But I'm not really sure. But it seems like um, stress could cause impotence and a whole whole bunch of other things. I don't know if it will have a physiological place on ov ovulation and stuff like that. I imagine it can also, huh? Yeah, I would say seeking, seeking treatments in that middle ground. They mm -hmm. can seek it at a couple of times. One, they could seek it while they're going through assisted reproductive treatments. Mm -hmm. And that can help them decrease the stress. And it can also help them make sense of how, you know, who are we going to tell about that we're going through the procedure. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes couples, yeah. the first attempt, they tell too many people. And, and then if it doesn't work, they regret that. Or uh, the next time that they get more cautious. So but particularly also after a treatment fails is when counseling can really help them because depression levels tend to go up, stress levels tend to go up, and that's a very, very difficult time for couples. And also yeah. they, they don't know, should we do it again? And they oftentimes need a counselor to kind of help them think through that. Yeah, I would think you'd need an outside source like a counselor to bounce this off of and give yeah. them perspective on yeah. it. And um, do you think a lot of people, or there are a lot out there who need counseling or just they don't know about it, they don't think about it? you think there's a large proportion of that? Yeah, I think there is. I think that the, the relationship between physicians and mental health providers is getting better and better. And mm -hmm. I think more and more reproductive endocrinologists are realizing that the link to the mental health is, is so important that they oftentimes have either a, an initial screening with a counselor. They'll, they'll recommend them to go see a counselor. Um, but sometimes I think we can wait a little too long until the, until the symptoms become so severe. Yeah. And sometimes it's helpful for them to get in before it gets, before it gets that bad. What is the latest research that you've done uh, in this field now? Is there, have you been a Chapman here? Yeah, I've done a lot of research on how couples cope with the infertility, and, and particularly not only just from an individual perspective, because mm -hmm. we know a lot of times coping with a problem, we use an individual coping strategy, we have an individual outcome. But infertility is quite different because both people are impacted by the stressor. Mm -hmm. So it's called a joint stressor. So some of the studies that we've done have, have looked at how coping has been related to not only the individual, but how the partner's coping impacts the other partner's stress levels. So uh, I have yeah. done some, uh, some research with a, a colleague at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark, and she's had uh, a great data set where she had over 2,000 men and women going through infertility treatments and followed them for a five-year period. Mm -hmm. And so we, we looked at this kind of question about how does the partner's coping impact mm -hmm. the other person? And we found some very interesting things, um, particularly that sometimes individuals use coping strategies that work well for them as an individual, but it's not good for their partner. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. yeah. So we found in, in, in one instance meaning-based coping, which is making sense of the infertility in a new way or finding new goals in life. Mm -hmm. um, if a man used that, it wasn't beneficial for his partner. It increased the woman's stress, particularly her social stress. But if a woman used it, it actually decreased uh, the man's marital distress. Things got better in their oh, marriage. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And we kind of figured that it was more of a kind of a pacing and timing issue, that sometimes men are more ready to move on more quickly. Yeah. And uh, women are, are not as ready to, to okay, say, I'm going to stop pursuing treatments right now. Um, and part of that's linked to the importance of identity as well. That's really interesting. Well, we're running out of time. It's a very interesting uh, conversation. W t just one last question, though. Do certain ethnic groups have more problems you're coping with this than others? I mean, North Europeans or... South Americans or any ethnic groups are, have a harder problem? I think the cross-cultural studies are, are kind of lacking right now, okay. and they need to do more. But certainly we know that, that certain ethnic groups that value family and childbearing, it can be mm -hmm. harder. So let's say in the Latino com community, mm -hmm. um, the importance of having a child is so critical. Uh, so I think it would be harder, in a sense, for them to cope. Or people who have certain religious affiliations, childbearing, if it's essential to their identity, both as an individual and as a, yeah. and as a person in a religion or a cultural group, 
that can be much more difficult to cope with, I think. That makes sense. Well, it's very interesting. I hope people see this and get counseling when they need it. I think probably it will help a lot of people. Thanks so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much.